Hello and welcome to Exploited Crimes and Technology. My name is Opal Singleton. I am the host of your show today. And we come to you every Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock right here on AM 590, The Answer. Well, I so much appreciate each and every one of you that follow this show. Uh, it's always amazing to me the reach that takes place, not just on this show, but also using this show to reach out through social media and uh, also all the other kinds of social media that we do. I'm going to tell you that I'm not a fan of social media, but quite frankly, I can't survive without it. We're just like you. I uh, I get very, very frustrated sometimes with uh, Facebook because they're constant, not just Facebook, but Instagram, Twitter, uh, you know, all of those Snapchat that uh, go into censoring. And yet, by the same time, they have a right to do that because they are a private company. It's an interesting discussion what is taking place in social media in our lives. Many of you know I've written a book called uh, Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. And it's really all about the impact, what the world is going to look like in the future, not just because of social media, but because of some advancing technologies that come together that change our kids' world. And it, let's face it, especially after a year of COVID, where our kids were locked down and, and younger and younger kids were put on social media. And I'm going to tell you, once you put a six-year-old on social media, even for online learning, they're not going to go back to their bicycles. It's just not realistic. They get as addicted to it as you do. But it sometimes goes bad. And uh, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. During the COVID time, I will tell you, it was one of the most challenging times in our lives. And uh, I, I very, very much appreciate each and every person that supported Million Kids financially. And that's, uh, we have a lot of donors that are just moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas that want to help us get our message out to educate young people. But we also have some big companies like uh, Sam Manuel Casino that cared deeply about families. And here they are having to shut down a lot of their business. Same thing with Pachanga. We were just part of their uh, golf tournament process seeds. And that helps us get our message across America. And as you will soon learn all around the world, uh, because it's amazing to me that this little microphone and this little impact right here in Southern California is changing lives in the UK and Australia and uh, uh, Luxembourg and Brazil and places, Belize, I couldn't believe Belize, places that I had no clue of. So what happened to us is uh, in during the COVID time, early April, May last year, and you know, for those of you that don't know all the background on this uh, situation, this, this uh, radio show is brought to you by an organization here in the Inland Empire called Million Kids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, millionkids.org. And I would highly recommend, if you don't follow us, that you go on and do that. Go to millionkids.org and be sure, be absolutely sure you sign up for the insider alerts. We analyze new cases about two to three times a week. These are cases of sextortion or social media exploitation. Uh, we sometimes talk about uh, trafficking related to the border situation or trafficking related to local massage parlors that we see where they're part of large scale gangs or large scale cartels coming out of China or um, in one case coming out of Mexico and using the unaccompanied minors and the money was being laundered right out of Colton. So we talk about those cases. We also talk about technologies uh, and how it is going to change everything. And it, and it absolutely will. Now, before we go too far, I want you to know right off the bat, I'm not against technology. We cannot just go around and take everything away from our children. They have to live in the real world. And yet that doesn't mean that we cave and just uh, go willy nilly 
into the night thinking our kid is going to be smarter than the average kid. I'm going to tell you in the work that I do, it is often the very smart kids that get themselves in trouble, especially through sextortion. And that's what I'm going to talk about today, where they end up sending a photo, even if it's just a, a just a not terribly risque photo, but if they connect with a pedophile and they will, I guarantee you that if your child is online, they will connect with a pedophile somewhere around the world. And it is bound to happen. And the real challenge here is how do we teach our kids to live in a world without borders using technology that's going to connect them to millions of people. Now, you know, if they're 11, 12, 13, you can have adult sex talks with them and they can understand what a pedophile is and you can jointly develop a strategy for um, protecting your child and teaching your child not only to protect themselves, but to be an influencer to other children. Where it scares the socks off me is the fact that we're putting all these prepubescent kids online. Now, it was necessary for school. I I get that. They couldn't go into school. I'm not sure I agreed with all of it, but they didn't ask my opinion, did they? (laughs) So so here you are with seven, eight, nine-year-old kids online, and they're very smart. They know how technology works. They can get this thing. You see, one of the challenges, technology comes with no warning. I think we need to do that. But then, quite frankly, nobody looks at it anyway. I often say if a, if a minor child is being violated online by some pedophile, who's at fault? Because somebody's providing that phone to them. And somebody's hitting, I agree, when you download an app. And you're supposedly, in some of these apps like TikTok, you're supposed to be 12 years old. Well, I've got news for you. Almost nobody I see on there in the young kids section is 12. But mom and dad buy the phone and hit, I agree, believing their child is smart enough to be a 12-year-old. Or maybe they just never think through it. Or they think, you know, I'm going to watch them and keep an eye on them. Well, I, you know, people get busy. And you trust at some point. You see, it is not the technology. I I often say technology is no different than a car. You can get in your car and you can drive off to university and get a degree, or you can get in your car and go to a strip club and get yourself in trouble. But you do not hand your seven-year-old the keys to the car. Because why? They don't have cognitive reasoning. They don't have adult judgment. And one of the problems with the cell phone is that you're going to expose that child to adult pedophilia because the apps no longer are just simple little apps in private little rooms where you can control everyone they talk to. The minute you put a child online under any capacity, they are literally living in a world without borders and a home without walls. And it's that simple. And so how do we protect them? Okay, you can buy all the filters, you can buy all the uh, trackers, But what happens in my experience is these kids know how to get the apps that you don't even know about, and they're not listed on your tracker or your filter. They also know how to get those uh, ghost apps, so you can't see some of the apps they have on there. These kids are smart, and they are going to live in this world. So I think that the name of the game for me is to begin to have partnership with your child, contracts, uh, both verbal and written. Every app that goes on there, you're going to be familiar with it. If they start downloading apps that you don't know about and you check that phone regularly because it is your phone that you're loaning to them, then if you see that they are putting on apps that that, uh, you really can't have on there, then, you know, you borrow your phone back until they're mature enough to understand they've broken the rules. And, and it's really that simple. So this is an interesting time in our society. I want to talk over the next 
couple, three segments here about what this looks like when it goes wrong and what to look for if you think a child in your life is being sextorted or blackmailed or being exploited because they've gotten involved with a relationship that they don't know how to get out of. And that's part of the battle is teaching a child how to get out of an exploitive relationship once it gets started, if it should happen. And I think we need to teach our kids exit strategy. My name is Opal Singleton. We're up against that break. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Hey, there are many good restaurants in the Inland Empire, but really great restaurants are hard to find. Let me tell you about the Toasted Barrel in Corona. It's a trendy, upscale steakhouse with great pasta and seafood. It's a fantastic choice for birthdays and anniversaries or just that special night out with your loved one and friends. Inland Empire Magazine has awarded them best restaurant and brunch for the past three years. The owners, Ed and Shirley, are friendly and attentive to your needs. If you're a prime rib connoisseur, this place is for you. Go ahead and try it out. The Toasted Barrel, located at 1300 El Sobrante Road in Corona. Or Google them at Toasted Barrel to make reservations. I guarantee you, you're going to love it. Be sure and tell Ed and Shirley that Opal sent you. It will be a night you'll never forget. Real estate sales in the Inland Empire are really hot. Sellers and buyers recognize that these low interest rates will not last. Sean and Colleen at Caldwell Banker Armstrong Properties in Riverside are proud to sponsor this show. They are the best in the Inland Empire. They're fair, honest, creative, and they care about you and your situation. If you're in the market to buy or sell a home, call Sean and Colleen at 951-529-4066. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and we are talking about how to deal with our kids in a world without borders, especially when one of the fastest growing crimes in the world is sextortion. Sextortion is a combination of two words, sex, that's simple, and extortion. And what happens in case after case, I'm going to share a bunch of cases with you. In case after case, kids get involved with someone they don't know that they believe to be somebody different than they are. And once they get involved, they don't know how to get out, especially if they're very young kids. As we often talk about with seven-year-olds, I mean, they want to please everybody and they don't want the man on the other end to get in trouble. 
And these pedophiles are really slick at, at going in and tricking our kids. Well, I, I decided to talk about this today because we had an interesting situation last week that was really fascinating. One of, one of the things that happens in my life is that I deal with the real cases. I am the training and outreach coordinator for the Riverside County Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force. And so I see all kinds of cases. Plus, you know, I've trained a half a million people and I have podcasts that go out around the world and this local radio uh, show. And we will be having a documentary come out for schools later this uh, year. We're waiting to see the uh, the trailers on it now. And uh, we expect that uh, to be near release within the next four to five weeks. So we're starting to get ready for it. And so uh, we have a pretty wide reach in our training. I also train through um, USC. I'm an instructor at three schools of USC and also the LA Fire Training Academy and the statewide code enforcement group. And also I work locally here from the Inland Empire with an organization called Children's Fund, and they contract training services for me um, through Zoom. And I will tell you, I am very, very grateful for Children's Fund. Uh, it got us through COVID. It allowed me to train thousands and thousands of people I never would have normally hooked up with, people from Belize and uh, Australia and a whole following from England and uh uh, Holland, Netherlands, and like that. So uh, one of the things that happened this last week is I did a Million Kids Insider Alert. Uh, the story really caught my eye. The victim is a nine-year-old girl in Australia, but the perpetrator is uh, from Beaverton, Oregon. And you say, well, what's that got to do with me? Well, I think that it was a great case to train parents of just how quickly this kind of uh, situation online can really change a child's life. So we made the insider alert. We sent it out around the world as we usually do. And we got contacted this last week by the girl's mother from Australia. And she had seen our insider alert and she wrote me to thank me for um, identifying her story, her child's story in a in a healthy and learning manner where the child would not be further violated. And uh, so I, that was really the driving force through deciding to share this with you today. Uh, the headline on this, if you're looking at me and kids insider alerts is Oregon man charged with child exploitation crimes after stalking and exploiting Australian minor using social media. This is a Homeland Security investigation. By the way, I cannot say enough good about Homeland Security. Uh, they really get a bad rap. They do. And uh, it's it's really too bad, in my opinion, that they do that because they run a child uh, exploitation investigation unit. There's a uh, part of it's out of San Bernardino and the huge part of it's out of Long Beach. And these are amazing men and women that just put their lives on the line and go after some of the nastiest stuff on earth. And I am grateful that they're willing to do that. So let me share with you about this story and how it started. Now, the guy uh, that is the perpetrator on this is a guy by the name of Jorge Rosales, and he's 25. And for almost five years, he played these games online, tricking kids. You see, he is a pedophile, whether he realized it or not. By the way, before I even get started on this, I want you to understand that there are some very long sentences for tricking kids online, especially if it involves sexual tricking or, or sending of photos, collecting or manufacturing of child pornography, you know, it is not uncommon to get 35, 45, 55 years in prison, in some cases over 100 years in prison. Now, of course, under California law, who knows what's going to happen there? You know? so that's a whole nother discussion where 20,000 sex offenders very likely will get out early. Thank you very much to Proposition 57. Actually, as I did a whole story on that two weeks ago, and I'm probably about to do another one, 76,000 uh, prisoners will get out early. 
regularly, and 20,000 of them are probably uh, registered sex offenders or will be. So, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle. Having said that, if you know of anybody that is playing games online with teenagers, tricking them into sending photos, they need to be reported because they usually never have only one victim and they are pedophiles and pedophiles, in my opinion, for life. Uh, I have seen very few recovering pedophiles in my lifetime, and I've worked with this for 13 years now. Okay, she's nine. He is 25. He lives in Beaverton, Oregon. She lives in Australia. He has a lot more clients or victims. Now, he goes online, and he pretends to be a friend for a prepubescent child. That's his specialty. Prepubescent children are sitting ducks on the internet. They are so easy to trick and recruit and seduce, and then they don't know how to get out of it. So uh, part of the work we do is educating you, mom and dad, about how to have that dialogue with that child. If she's nine, she doesn't know what adult sex is, but she's about to find out, and it's not the kind of discussion that a parent would want her child to see. And on top of it, what's going to happen is he's going to change her life completely. But once the girl gets in, she doesn't know how to get out. And I think that's one of the big holes in our education system, that if you're online and even if you've gotten your toe in the water and sent a couple of pictures, you've got to figure, uh, teach your child how to get out because Literally 58% of kids who send a naked photo online that are being blackmailed will not tell. And a large number of those children will go out somehow and either get the person to try to hook up with them or they will hook up with that guy or gal. And and then, then the violation, the physical violation begins. And to think that you're just going to go online and tell this pedophile off and he's going to quit bothering your child is absolute folly. I can't think of anything worse. Do not do that. Take the photos. Do not delete them. If your child is into this, do not delete them. Photo shoot them. And do not go on and alert the pedophile that your child is, uh, you know, that he's taking advantage of a nine-year-old and that you're going to the police. Just keep quiet, take the photos, and everybody go to the police. And then get the whole family counseling. The reason for that is police cyber crime unit can stand in for the child and start the conversation as if it's the child by reviewing what the child has previously said and done and be able to track back and find out who this person is. But if you know somebody that's doing that, you need to know this is a federal crime and often an international crime. And you, it will not be uncommon for them to get 30 years, 45 years, 55 years in prison. Now, in California law, who knows how long you're really going to serve, but it is a very serious crime. This young lady is nine. He's living in Oregon. He contacted this young girl online and gets her to send some photos. Now, nine-year-olds don't really know what kind of photos a pedophile wants, so they show them. And she's naive. And so what happens then is that she sent a couple of photos and he starts threatening her and she panicked. She didn't know what to do. So he then starts really getting hard and nasty with her. And he sent her adult pedophilia photos of very small children, as well as animals that were being violated. She's only nine. She panicked. She had no idea what to do. Now, he doesn't quit at this point. This goes on for three years. Keep in mind, she's now going through puberty. And so her first sexual experiences are one of violation of one of being uh, really exploited and not knowing how to get free. And so uh, what happened is she finally, mom and dad finally found out and they intervened. So we're coming up against that break. Folks, stay with us. I want to share with you that story and a couple more. So I'll be right back. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. I want to tell you about a book I wrote called Seduced, The Grooming of America's Teenagers. It's all about how predators access, groom, recruit, and exploit our young people using social media, 
online gaming, video chat rooms. Technology is changing at the speed of light, and we have to understand how to keep our kids safe from predators. So you can get this book by going to www.meandkids.org. It's $16. I'll sign it, and I'll ship it to you personally. We hope that you will order this book, educate yourself about how to keep our kids safe in this day of changing technology. Join us each Saturday for our radio show at Exploited Crimes and Technology at 3 o'clock on AM 590, The Answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. We are talking about a case of a girl out of uh, Australia who is being exploited online through a guy from Beaverton, Oregon, and he just gets really, really vile with her. And this went on for three years. Now, I learned something that I I thought I knew everything, right? (laughs) I don't. But one of the things that he did was uh, when she began to pull back and not cooperate, then he uh, began to communicate with other people that he identified that followed her on TikTok and uh, began to show those photos to him, to them. So one of the things that I think is so important, maybe we don't need the adult sex talk with a, with a kid that's prepubescent if you're going to put them on, but I do think you have to talk about the power of a picture. And you know, I always say, if kids do not understand where naked photos go when you hit send, they shouldn't be on the internet regardless of their age because they are just setting ducks. These sweet kids that are on there, they're having a lot of fun. Everybody you know is online and they are trying to figure out how to be cool but not get violated. And every child I ever met thinks it's never going to happen to them. So I think we start out, and this was the purpose of my documentary is where do naked photos go when you hit send? And maybe, maybe they don't have to know everything about adult pedophilia, but they do need to understand that if they're online, the number one enemy of a child online is somebody who wants you to send them a photo, any photo. I don't care if it's a photo of your family pet. And that's oftentimes where they'll start. They'll they'll do the family pet, but you'll see a little kid in the background. You see, one of the things that kids don't understand is how technology works. And I I just um uh, I always just kind of get beside myself to think that uh, how naive we all are. Uh, if your kid's playing a video game on any kind of console like Discord or or uh, PS5 or PS4 Think about what is happening. They have live streaming on them, mom and dad. What does that tell you? They can see everything in your view. Let's say your son is on there and you have a 10-year-old sister. He can see the 10-year-old sister. So the first thing they, they will do that needs to talk to about a child is that once you live stream or you FaceTime, they're not just seeing you, they're seeing everything in your house that your child is, is showing. They're, they're seeing all the other family members there and they will send you photos. So the first dialogue, even if they don't understand what adult pedophilia is, the first dialogue is the real danger is you're letting the entire world into your house. They can see your little brothers and sisters. They can see you. They can see you if you're behind your big brother or sister. And so if they're asking, if they're sending you a photo Stop right there because you don't know them. Help them understand that you've just opened the door and allowed a total stranger to come into your life. And the minute they send a photo, any kind of photo, you block them. You stay out. And then if they want a photo back and you've never met them personally, what do you do? You go to mom and dad and you impress mom and dad with how smart you are because you're willing to show that they sent a photo and they want one back. And that is the value of having open dialogue in a world that is there. If they send any kind of sexual photo or they're just playing games with you, 
then you need to be able to say to somebody else, I'm talking to this person, what do you think? And let's start to talk about how the internet's made. And once you send that photo, even if it's your family pet, to someone you're talking to online, is that you need to know where does that photo go and then what kind of response. Because what they do with these kids is they they groom them. You know, you, you've heard about the grooming process. It used to be that you would look at the pedophile down the street and you would go through the registered sex offenders online and you'd see how far they live from you. If you put your child on TikTok, they are going to be exposed up to 10,000 pedophiles. It is an adult world when you send a photo out to millions of people that you have never met and now they want more photos and more provocative photos. The very first thing they do is move you to another app. I share that with parents and kids. If you're playing on TikTok and and you send out that photo and they come back and go, wow, that's really a cool photo. Meet me on Instagram. Hey, send me more of those photos and make them even better. And maybe you start off with something in a swimsuit or something in a cute little outfit and pretty soon you're show, throwing, showing some shoulder As long as you're interacting, a stranger is impacting your child. And it's that simple. And so the next thing there is, as happened with this young lady, is she said, no, I I don't want to do this. And she blocked Rosales' account. This went on for years. He contacted her other TikTok followers. He created and used a whole lot of other social media names to begin to stalk and torment her in a major way. And finally, before it was over, the parents got involved. They sent it off to the Interpol, uh, Europol, which is like our um, Homeland Security kind of thing. And it turned out that he had multiple complaints against him at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. I can't remember quite how many, but it was like 18 or something. So a lot of other people, these guys never are happy with one little uh, victim. They literally want to be able to, uh, you know, control these children and they will have thousands of them. And the other thing that happens is these guys form relationships with other pedophiles. So it might be possible that your child without realizing it is talking to nine, 10, 18, 25, 29, 29 is the biggest ring I've seen 29 different pedophiles depending on how the child responds. And I've never met a child yet that realizes they're talking to a large number of pedophiles. I believe that as time goes on and more and more young people are online and more and more pedophiles are accessing this advanced technology, that sextortion will be a much bigger crime than like human trafficking. And I care deeply about human trafficking. But what is happening is that literally 80% of human trafficking, meaning kids who get into prostitution, 80% of them had been previously sexually violated. And if we're looking at 58% of 9,000 kids a day that are being violated that will not tell, we're creating a superhighway of future sexual exploitation of our children. And it has to be addressed. And that is why we teamed up to make a full length movie uh, that is being done by Stephen Peake. And also our uh, documentary will be uh, cut out of that full length movie. And it's coming out. uh, We believe it'll probably hit the Netflix probably long about uh, August is what we're thinking. They're promising July, but I never believe that in in, uh, dealing with movies. (laughs) You never know. But this is an important discussion, mom and dad and grandma and grandpa. And we're not, our kids are going to live in the real world. So let's think this out and let's give them an exit strategy. I'm going to talk about that a little bit in the next section, because I think that the first thing is we can't just wag our fingers and say, thou shall not. We do need in-depth conversation about what it's like to live in their world. But we also need to give them an exit strategy. You know, this nine-year-old girl took this for a long, long time because she didn't 
want to get in trouble and she didn't want to make the man mad. And she had no cognitive understanding of how serious the crime was. That's because nobody can, you know, when you're eight or nine, you really don't understand adult sex and pedophilia. And so I think that if we put our kids online, then one of the first things we need to do is start to talk to them about, you know, if this happens, this is what you do. And I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm not going to scream and yell. I'm not going to wag my finger. Now, I would hope that you trust me enough that you'll come to me and we can talk about it. Show it to me. What do you think, mom? Is this something? And I'll teach you to analyze it and I'll analyze it at the same time. That's much better. But if it starts to get really, really tough and really, really bad, and you've got yourself in a mess, what I want you to understand is that we need to help you find ways out because these guys are clever and they're good and they're working all over the world. And it's going to take all of our smartness to get out of this. And so I think that's a dialogue we need to have. My name is Opal Singleton. This show is Exploited Crimes and Technology. And we hope that you will join us next week and share this show. But we're going to talk about another case. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Custom Service Systems, a proud supporter of Million Kids, is a family-owned and operated commercial cleaning company servicing the Inland Empire and surrounding areas since 1974. CSS takes pride in their ability to maintain the business facilities they serve and their long-lasting relationships with their valued clients. CSS provides a variety of cleaning systems customized to client needs, including deep cleaning and disinfectant to be COVID-19 compliant. From basic office cleaning to windows and floors, CSS will clean up your mess so you don't have to stress. Custom Service Systems cares about families and communities and wants to give back. Custom Service Systems are proud supporters of Million Kids to keep kids safe from predators. If you need the best cleaning services for your business or corporation, contact Custom Service Systems at cssclean.com. Again, cssclean.com or call 951-781-9345. That's 951-781-9345. You will know you found the best. Custom Service Systems. Hello, this is Opal Singleton of Exploited Crimes and Technology. Let me tell you about my friend Doris Anderson at Remax Realty in Upland. She is amazing. She's kind, she's patient, but she listens. And she's informed and she will help you with your real estate transaction in a way that works for you. Doris, in full disclosure, often supports the work of me and kids because she cares about young people. But she knows how to analyze a market, how to market a property, and how to find just the right transaction for both buyers and sellers. If you're looking to buy or sell real estate or invest in income property, contact Doris Anderson at Remax Realty 951-733-8899. That's 951-733-8899. 951-733-8899. This message is all about Million Kids, the organization that helps locate missing kids throughout Southern California and educates to keep kids safe from predators. Million Kids educates school administrators, teachers, parents, and teenagers how predators identify a potential victim and the methods they use to recruit innocent kids. BMW of Riverside is a proud supporter of Million Kids. Visit BMW of Riverside at the Adams Street exit off the 91 freeway or click bmwofriverside.com. AM 590, the answer. Hello and welcome back to Exploited Crimes and Technology. This is Opal Singleton and we are talking about the crime of sextortion. I do want to say thank you to everyone who follows this show that shares it. I'm always amazed by the number of people that hear this show and and contact me. And you can do that, by the way, at Opal, O-P-A-L, at millionkids.org. And they contact me and tell me what has gone on in their life and how this show has been able to intervene in some sextortion case, or we've been able to get the family into counseling and the kid into counseling and get the case into Homeland Security. Yeah, I had a whole bunch of cases lined up and I haven't gone to them, but let me just throw a couple of them in here. 
Here's a man charged with sexually assaulting teen he met online. By the way, it only takes me about five minutes to find 10 cases to share with you. These are so prevalent. He's a 25-year-old Las Vegas man indicted by a federal grand jury. He lured a local youth to a meeting, assaulted her sexually, attempted to exploit her with pornographic uh, videos. They did a takedown on him. Um, he uh, met a Las Vegas Valley teen, obtained her phone number and personal information, and then he began to tell her, I own you. And this victim just simply didn't know how to get out. Uh, he met with a young lady. He sexually abused her, pay, took more photos, and always gets worse. Um, he threatened to sell her on Tinder. Uh, he created a Tinder account for her and told her that she had to, to go into prostitution and she needed to make $200 by June 9th. Um, he did get a, a long sentence, but this all started online. One that I talked about a while back that ended tragically is, uh, the young lady named Patricia Alatori, who was, um, uh, 13 years old, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful young lady, smart, uh, creative, attractive, uh, uh, a good student. Everybody loved her. And she met a 24 year old uh, or 23 year old Armanda Cruz out of Inglewood. She lived in Bakersfield. Uh, she met up with him. She sent photos. He began to blackmail her. She snuck out. She actually put her clothes in her bed under her bedding. So her mom and dad would think she was asleep. And, uh, they later found her body where she had been raped and burned. And, um, you know, these, these are case after case after case that I can show of, of these. One of the things that is really concerning me right now is so many of these cases, the kid sneaks out of bed in the middle of night. There was one out of Fresno not too long ago when they picked her up in Denver on a plane, uh, met up with a guy who was a pedophile, 40 years old, ugly as sin. And uh, she snuck out, got on the plane. Uh, she was on her way back to Virginia. He was renting a child pornography site. Um, young man down in uh, Escondido. He was uh, 14 and he met a guy from Orlando and, and uh, the parents uh, realized uh, that he didn't come home from school, that he had snuck out and met this guy and ultimately FBI got involved and they picked him up with his pedophile as they're getting off the plane in Orlando. So you're seeing more and more of these cases where the kid just disappears. And this is what is driving my conversation with you today is that I believe in some cases, they get uh, in a fantasy going, but in other cases, they're afraid of getting caught. They're afraid of rejection, and they will meet up with that person, sneak out and meet up with that person and disappear. So that's why I think the uh, teaching a child an exit strategy is so important because this child is just, even if they're a 14-year-old boy or a 15-year-old boy, they do not have the adult capacity to understand the level of uh, explo exploitation. I, I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but these guys just get evil and they're not equipped for it. And on top of it, they can't perceive because this started, you see that the nature of a fantasy relationship is you feel like you're part of somebody who thinks you're special. And so you get lured in and you send that photo. And then one day you find out you're not only not special, but you're one of hundreds of people that he may be violating or she may be violating. And yes, females are pedophiles also. And they, yes, they do prey on young men. Uh, we had a case out of, um, uh, out of Oklahoma where he snuck out to have sex with her thinking she lived not far away and two women showed up. He was kidnapped and taken eight hours away from his home, held hostage for five days and eventually and raped. And eventually he was, um, uh, let go, but he was naked along the side of a road. So it can be female too. And especially in these video game chat rooms with the young men. So here's what I really want you to take home and share with your children and your grandchildren is should it happen? Should you find yourself that you got caught in this thing early, early on? First of all, I hope you're not talking to anyone you don't know. Second of all, remember that with live streaming and FaceTime, that you're letting these people in your house. It's a home without walls now, a world without borders. That's the nature of my book. But the next thing is if they want photos and they start sending you photos, those are great 
uh, hot buttons right off the bat, you're in trouble. Um, you know, okay, let me take that back. You're not in trouble, but they are going to put you in a compromising position. And the way you get strength is you talk about it. The minute that, that you see photos going back and forth that just, you, you stop and go, wait a minute, what do I know about this person? And why are they sending me this photo? Immediately bring it to me. It's a conversation. We need joint strength. You are not in this alone. And then let's craft a plan. Never delete those photos. If they send delete, uh, naked photos, including your child's naked photos, take screenshots of them, save them, and go to the police. They are large-scale rings that your child can't stand against. And the most important thing is to report it. And I'm going to give you the number. It's also on our website. But it's one 888 the reporting number for any kind of sextortion or trafficking or child pornography, 1-888-37-37-888. You can also contact me. Now, I'm not 911, okay, but I can direct you. But if it's a serious matter, you're seeing sexual images, go immediately. Do not get on there and scream at the pedophile. Just go immediately and find your nearest vice unit, your cyber crimes unit, or contact Homeland Security's Crimes Against Children or that at that 888 number. Now, it's not 911, but you need to clarify that if some child's uh, life isn't uh, being affected here. And then the next thing you do is you jointly get strength together. You say, wow, it's a tough world out there. And I thank you so much for being mature about this, for not sending those photos and for letting me know somebody wants something bad from you. It is a world without borders. And if they've already sent it, stand by your kid, go to the police department, but embrace your child and let them know how proud you are of them, that they trusted you enough to handle it well, and that you're going to be there beside them and begin to process it and look and see how serious it is. It is possible that you might need to remove the phone for a while. It is possible, but it's more important that you bond with your child and help them through it. This generation will be and face more challenges and more uh, opportunities to fail than any generation before them. And they're going to need grace. They're going to need love and support and confidence and belief in them. My name is Opal Singleton, and this show is brought to you by Million Kids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N, millionkids.org. And I do want to take a minute to say thank you to each and every one of you that, that cut a check, uh, charge a credit card, and support our work. Uh, if you are a major organization and, and you need some training, we can do that. Um, but also follow us at millionkids.org. Get on that insider alert so you can stay current and you can see how these happen. In the meantime, I want to thank all of you that have helped us through this last year of COVID that make this show possible, that make it possible for us to educate parents and grandparents and, and teachers. Yes, we educate a lot of school officials. Uh, that is part of our role and what we do. And the only way that we've been able to do this is because of your financial support. So I greatly appreciate it. We are not a big organization. We are a local organization. Uh, by the way, this show is archived at millionkids.org if you want to share it with somebody. It comes on at 3 o'clock every Saturday afternoon, so you can get your friends to listen to it. And if they're out of the area, they can listen on amw590.com. And I got that wrong. Yes, am 590 TheAnswer.com, not AMW. That's America's Most Wanted. Sorry about that. So it's AM590, TheAnswer.com. So thank you, each and every one of you. I hope you have a great week this week. Put your arms around your kids and let them know how proud you are of them and that you know they are living in challenging and exciting times. And you will be there for them. Give everybody a big hug, and I'll see you next Saturday at 3 o'clock on AM 590. 
Societal Shift, A World Without Borders and a Home Without Walls. This is the most important book you will read this year, especially if you have children or grandchildren. We are living at the most important time in all of history. In 2020, the entire world will be connected by internet, more than six billion people coming together. Technology will provide many great advantages for our kids, but a world without borders for our kids is also a world without borders for pimps, predators, pedophiles, cartels, and organized crime. It is a home without walls because 87% of the kids sleep with their phone. It is the greatest societal experiment of all time. Our kids are technology geniuses and their parents are technophobic. Some are techno impotent. New apps come with no warnings on how a predator will use them against our kids. Advancing technologies like encrypted messaging, vaporware, artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency, and the dark net will challenge law enforcement, teachers, and parents to keep kids safe. Recent research states that 9,000 kids a day are being blackmailed with a naked photo and 58% will meet their predator. It is indeed a societal shift and one in which most parents are unprepared. If you are a parent or grandparent, teacher, counselor, or social worker, please take time to read Societal Shift. Only $18.99 plus $6 shipping. Order today at millionkids.org. That's millionkids, M-I-L-L-I-O-N-K-I-D-S dot org. It'll be the greatest gift you can give your family and yourself. Order Societal Shift today. Million Kids takes checks and credit cards. Opal Singleton, the author, will personally sign the book and send it to you. Again, go to millionkids.org and order Societal Shift today. Join Million Kids. Keep our kids safe from predators.